it doesn't have to take a lifetime to reach enlightenment. It takes a lifetime of discipline of living in alignment with your soul, but the actual experience of samadhi is a moment. The actual experience of awakening is just now. And you realize who you are. So I think that we have to get away from the belief that it's going to take time, that we're heading towards something better. Why don't we just be in that better moment now, right now, and birth that right now? Because the more that the, the, all of humanity believes that something better is coming, something better is always going to be coming. And in 50 years, something better is coming. And in 300 years, something better is coming. Or we can say, you know what? I'm birthing a higher consciousness in myself right now. I'm awakening to ultimate reality right now. Then that something better is here right now. So I think that part of moving from the 3D into the 5D is recognizing that time is not linear. There is no beginning, middle, end. There is no yesterday, today, tomorrow. Everything is happening right now. There is only now. And if you believe that all good things are coming later, then the universe is like, cool, everything will just happen later. And then later on, everything's going to be later. So even when it comes into birthing and ushering in this higher age of consciousness, you have to be not waiting for it, but being it right now to the level that you're able to, right? So I think it's like, in, I think what happens is so many people with a higher consciousness are dimming themselves to fit in with the normal average person. Stop dimming yourself. Go into the consciousness that you know you can do, or that, that you know you are, and be there 24 hours a day and be unapologetic about how enlightened you are and how gifted you are. And stop, stop trying to make sure that everybody who has like a lower consciousness than you or an average consciousness or whatever, that, that, that they're feeling okay. Because for the most part, many of them won't even notice. So just go be that higher realm being that you are. Go be and express and, 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 and radiate that higher realm light, that higher consciousness that you not just have, but that you are, because that's going to do more than waiting for things to change. That's going to do more right now than, than knowing that you're part of something that's going to get better later. Like go be that right now. And if you get billions of people on the planet, all of a sudden shifting into their highest state of consciousness right now, guess what? Everything's going to change right now. Everything. So it's a matter of getting over yourself. It's a matter of getting over your human, your ego saying, oh, well, enlightenment's only for Buddha or Christ consciousness is only for Christ conscious. I could, I could never be that wise. Well, okay, well, go be as wise as you can be and do it right now. You know, put down the bad habits that are that are making you roll downhill. Start surrounding yourself with people who you admire and want to be like, that you aspire to be like. And so it does include some hard life changes for some people to take a look at themselves and say, I think I have a higher than average consciousness. And I think I'm I'm dimming myself so that I fit in so that I'm in my comfort zone. But actually, this comfort zone sucks. I don't feel comfortable here. It's just, it's just what I know. And I don't know what the unknown is. And that scares the shit out of me. Excuse my language. But that's really how people feel. And yet when they move into the higher consciousness, when they start behaving in alignment with their soul, they start meeting some really incredible people and coming into higher consciousness communities who are waiting for them. So part of it is just this moment of like, get over yourself. Get over this human part of you that's holding you back from your own soul assignment and go do what you're here to do, which is only being who you're here to be, be the best, most magnificent, lightest expression of you that is possible. Radiate that love everywhere and you're doing it. You're doing it without even having to go do because the human experience is not about doing, it's about being. Because at the end of this world, at the end of your, at the last breath, it's no one's going to ask you, what'd you do? How'd you do? How, how much money did you make? Nobody's asking that. You get to see and experience how in alignment with your soul you were, how in alignment with your ego you were. And that's the only thing they're looking at. That's the only thing you're looking at. How much did I grow in my gifts? How much did I grow in consciousness? How much did I radiate that consciousness everywhere? Or did I hide and act human and just play the role of a human person and hide all my gifts?
and try to make as much, you know, myself as comfortable as I can in the physical realm. And then you leave and there is no physical realm. Oops. So I was 29 when it happened and I was perfectly healthy. Every, well, actually that's not true. I had something going on, but I didn't know it. Um, but other than that, I was, you know, definitely pretty healthy. It wasn't like I had something terminal and I, I knew I was going to die or anything like that, but I wasn't feeling well. I wasn't feeling optimal. And I was an avid rock climber, backpacker, and very, very active. And then I started to feel kind of tired and achy and I didn't know what was going on. My neck hurt and different things were happening over the past few weeks. Um, and so I got an appointment with somebody practicing alternative medicine and it got a lot worse from there. Uh, and this woman that I went to was practicing um, alternative medicine as, as an alternative medicine doctor. And it turned out later, I found out she had never been to school and didn't have a license. And so she injured me to the point of having a near death experience. Um, it's all user error, which is why I don't say exactly what she used on me because what she did would be perfectly safe in the hands of a doctor, but you know, it wasn't with her. So I ended up feeling much worse after she worked with me. And it wasn't like I died immediately. I didn't have a near death experience immediately in front of her. It was actually like the next day. I just kept getting worse and worse and worse. And I didn't know what was going on with me. And I remember just feeling like something's very wrong. And I, it, it was, it was a different feeling than like, you know, when I had my appendix out, it was much more, it was, it was like that warning sign going off in my head, like something's wrong, but, but worse. And so I just went to lay down because I'm thinking, oh, well, I, you know, maybe I'm tired, maybe I'm sick. I don't know. Um, but you know, I think one of the first things that I do anyways is, is kind of denial, like, oh, I'm it's probably fine. You know, I'm just gonna lie down and I'll be better because I think that's what our human minds are going to think. Like we're not, we don't just jump and run up to the hospital every time we don't quite feel well. So I lied down and that's really when it happened. Um, I felt exhausted to the point where it was like having the life force draining out of my body. And I remember feeling like breathing was so difficult. And I remember feeling like I felt like I had this big iron weight sitting on my chest. And every time I breathed in, it was like I had to push it up and then kind of let it fall back down on me. And it was just the struggle of pushing it up and letting it fall and pushing it up. And I'm lying there and the life force is draining out of my body. And I just realized that I could let it fall. I could not push it back up and that I would be okay. And so at one point I just sort of took my last breath and I let it fall. I let that, that heaviness just fall on me. And that's where really this overwhelming feeling that I'm going to be okay. You know, I, I had this, a, a few things all happened all at once, but one was just this knowing that breathing, it's kind of funny. I was thinking breathing's really overrated. It's funny. We have to think we do that. We think we have to do this at the same time. There was sort of this like this joy, this sort of bliss around me, this light that everything's fine. The awareness that this, this means I'm going to die. And also a deeper awareness that like, no, you're not dying. You're fine. Everything's fine. There is no death. So all of these things are happening simultaneously. And then I'm listening to the silence and I'm hearing my heart take its last beat. And I hear this buzzing sound that fades away. And I, I, the only thing I can think of is like maybe my nervous system, maybe our nervous systems have a buzzing sound that we don't hear until we die. I don't know. But that was my experience of this buzzing sound going away. And then this bright light is shining at me and it just was so bright and so beautiful, but it wasn't, um, it wasn't something I can describe that we, we see here on earth. It was like literally a thousand suns shining at me and then into me with such a beautiful, warm sensation of bliss um, and familiarity. Like, oh, oh yeah, that's right. It was always there. I just kind of forgot. And, and I just got locked into that. Um, like I was fixated on it and I couldn't look away, even though my eyes were closed, but it was, I, I realized now, cause I didn't know back then what was really happening, but now I realize it was my spiritual eye, but I didn't know. So I'm just enjoying this bliss and then realizing that this is it and just in this light and then kind of floating, I guess you could say above my bed and then going into the process of saying goodbye to my husband and my family. Again, realizing this means I'm dying, but also with this 
complete awareness that no, I'm not, there is no such thing. So it's funny because at 29, you'd think I'd be really worried, but I, I, it was like the most familiar process, which makes no sense because it's not like it happened before in this life. So I was saying my goodbyes with so much gratitude for everybody that um, was close to me in my life. And then that's when I really had the NDE part where I was stepping beyond what, I mean, it's, I call it stepping beyond a veil because that's what it felt like, but I wasn't in a physical body. So I wasn't actually stepping anywhere and there was no veil, but I don't know how to explain in human words, how we go from this physical form into non-physical and kind of wake up to who you really are. But that's what that experience was for me. And when I got there, and again, it's just like the stepping past a thin veil. And when I, when I, when I stepped past it, I felt this being there kind of waiting for me. And I felt like this being's job was to help usher me you know, through, through my, my, my near death or my, it wasn't a near death. I didn't know near death. I just thought I was going to die. I thought it was permanent. And I, this, this being was, was helping me through my life review. And so the life review started and I got to see all the points of my life. I got to relive everything from when I was a baby on up to 29 years old. And they showed me like a, like an interactive experience where I can't say it's like a movie, like I was watching it on screen. It was like I was reliving it as myself and then also as whoever I was interacting with and then also as oneness consciousness simultaneously all at once. And it started from, you know, everything was great. I was little and I was happy, happy and joy and bliss. And then I had my first incident um, where I realized that I made a big life mistake and I was only I was in kindergarten so I was four or five years old and I was being cruel to somebody I was being mean to somebody on purpose and that was the first time that I got to experience not just bliss but I got to experience this really deep regret of realizing that I guess you could say that because you're experiencing everything at once so there is no more duality there is no, no more linear time everything's happening all at once but I, I'll say I got to experience myself being mean to this little girl who was a friend of mine. She was, we were in kindergarten together and I was teasing her and making her cry. And I got to experience her feeling like, why is she doing this to me? Why are you so, why are you hurting my feelings? She didn't understand. And I was misusing my power, I'll say, you know, I wouldn't have put it that way in kindergarten, but I was in, I was sort of like feeling like, yeah, you know, it, it almost superior in a way, like I could hurt you and just playing with it in a really nasty way and teasing her to, to where she cried. And I remember the only reason I stopped is because I didn't want to get in trouble for making her cry. And it didn't really matter in my life review that I was little. It mattered that I was hurting somebody intentionally. It mattered that I was only worried about myself and whether or not I got in trouble and not the fact that I am hurting this person for no real reason. There's no reason. And that was where I got to experience her pain, myself being a jerk, and just, I guess you could say this all ever expanding God consciousness or infinite love being, witnessing it without any judgment. And so the only person judging was me, you know, feeling, watching this going, what are you doing? But it's just deep regret inside of me. And so that was kind of my first big moment in my life review. And then, of course, there were lots of really good moments. You know, I had worked in a trauma intensive care. So I'd, taken, I'd gotten a chance to take care of people. I worked on an ambulance. And so there was a lot of good moments where I helped people. And in those moments, you know, you get to relive them. And it's interesting because some of those moments are like moments that I think we miss. These moments where we're showing kindness to somebody that is no big deal to us. But to them, maybe it changed their life. And we didn't even know it. And those were really good moments because we're just being, we're just being our normal selves. Um, and it's a moment maybe where somebody really needed something and I, I gave them the kindness or the generosity and we didn't think a thing of it, you know, but that moment changed everything for them. And then you get to relive and see from their perspective, how you changed their life or how you just uplifted them. And so the bliss from the universe, it just felt like you're just being showered with gratitude or I was being showered with gratitude of, you know, basically being a good person. And, and I guess 
the way I kind of feel about it is they were showing me when I was, you know, I guess aligned with my soul versus aligned with my ego. When I was coming home to God consciousness or when I was going away. And that, that feeling of bliss, you know, I got to experience when I was coming home, when I was going back into soul consciousness and being kind. So that was kind of an overview of my life review. And the interesting thing I want to interject here, because I, I, I forget to tell people this, and I think this is so important. Um, so here I am, you know, four or five years old being mean to somebody on purpose. And I knew it. This is not something that ever escaped me. I always remembered that moment, even, you know, not just because I had a near death experience, but I remembered that I was not nice to her. And years later, I was working in that hospital and we had a new patient and it was somebody who had been through a trauma and or had, you know, it was an, an accident. And I was working as like an ICU tech. And one of the nurses was like, Hey, can you go out to the waiting room? The family's there and just let them know we're getting this person, you know, situated and admitted and everything. I'm like, yeah, no problem. So I go out there and there she is with her whole family. And it was her, somebody that she knew her family member that had been in the accident. And in that moment I walked in the waiting room and it was like, Oh wow. The universe is letting me make this one up. I'm getting a do over. And I did, <laughs> I took advantage of that. And I was just showering them, her, her family, her mom with kindness because I realized the universe was, didn't forget either. And it was like my chance to redeem myself and, and to forgive um, myself. And, you know, we're still connected, this, this woman and I, and she doesn't remember this moment at all, <laughs> the, the first one when we were little. Um, but I think it's beautiful how the universe let me make that one up, you know, and I think that that comes around for a lot of us um, at different times. And sometimes we're going to be aware of it. And sometimes I think we miss it. But, but I think that we get that chance to kind of um, make up those big mistakes that we make, which is beautiful. Um, so after that, just wanted to interject that because it's, it's such a beautiful thing that happened. And I always forget to share that. Um, so I have my, my life review. And then I move into a space where I'm in a void. It's interesting because I want to, I want to tell you what I saw, but I didn't see with my human eyes because I wasn't in my body anymore. But it was like being in outer space with no lights but not, it didn't feel dark. It felt like there was like a, a stray of light, a, a ray of light would have been foreign. Like it would have been too much for the space. We didn't need a ray of light. There was just this infinite void of bliss and peace and joy and love and anything else would have been foreign. And there were these beings there waiting for me. Very familiar, these four beings. I can't tell you who they are or what they look like because there was no look, right? Because we're not in physical form anymore. I just knew they were there. And they first just showered me with so much love, bliss, and joy. It, it, I, <clears throat> I wouldn't be able to hold it in my human body if it happened like here on earth. I, I think it would just explode me. It was, it was a superhuman experience. It was a non-human experience, right? It was a spiritual experience. And I remember at one point after they sort of just showered me or, or just blasted me with this love and joy and bliss that they felt like very close to me. Like they were connecting to me and we got very silent and very serious and it felt like they were downloading me with something, some information that I would need later. And later didn't mean I was in that moment later didn't mean I was going to come back, you know, and it was a near death experience later just meant later on my journey of the soul. I didn't know what was going to happen next, but I got this download. I didn't know what it was. There was no language. There was no words. There was no explanation, just this vibration. And it took, you know, it's interesting because everything's in happening now. Everything's happening in infinite time. It felt like it took a long time, but I can't tell you, you know, because there was no time. But it, it didn't feel fast. And it felt like this very sacred moment that we were having together. And then when that was complete, I knew that they'd given me something very special that I was meant to share later. But it was like getting a box that I didn't open. I didn't know how to open yet. And it took years to open this to find out what they gave me. Um, but I did, I did get that. And then after that sort of download was complete, I noticed I sort of got distracted and I saw this light off in the distance, this circular white light, like a disc. 
but it wasn't like a tunnel in front of me. It was like a disc on the floor. Again, there's no floor. There's no, you know, physical realm, but, and then there is a silhouette of a person slowly moving through the floor and then into this light and then moving in into the light. And I remember asking them, who is that? And they said, it's the part of you that gets attached. And we just stood there or, or we witnessed that in that silence, watching that part of me go through this light. And then I remember just realizing, having a realization that I was never Mariko, that I was never a rock climber. I was never somebody who practiced Chinese medicine. I never worked in a hospital. I never did any of that. I am bliss. I am joy. I am love. And this is who I am. And it was like this profound freedom of like, I'm me. Oh, this is who I am. You know, and it was a waking up to who I truly am instead of death. There was no death. <clears throat> it was a death of my ego, death of who I thought I was. But, you know, just this profound awakening of this is truly who I am, who I always have been and who I always will be. And everything else is like, I can't believe I thought I was anything else. How funny, how silly of me, you know, because it's such a, it's such a ultimate reality. And you realize anything else can't fit into that ultimate reality. None of the things that we think we are, it doesn't, it's that it doesn't fit in that puzzle, in that equation. So I had that realization and it felt like I was, again, I'm not standing but I don't have human words to describe this, but it was like I was standing out watching the universe, realizing this is who I am. I am love, I am joy, I'm bliss, I'm me. <clears throat> and like everything I thought I was, was dropping away as I'm realizing this. Every identity that I had taken on of my favorite foods to my favorite, obviously rock climbing was a huge part of my life. Um, backpacking, all the things I thought I was, just dropped away and I got to be me and just sort of soar in this infinite love, joy, and bliss. And it felt like I was doing that for, you know, hundreds of years. And people have asked like, how long was that? And I'm like, I don't know, like 800 years. <laughs> like it was, it was so much longer than human time. It was infinite time. So it was like, it was like, well, I've always been that. How do I, how do you create a finite and tell you it was 10 minutes when, when it's always been this and it's never been otherwise. So it's a funny thing to try to explain. And that's why I think I came up with 800 years is because it's this inconceivable time that you could be standing somewhere. And then that's when I heard a voice. And it, they didn't speak with voices. They did, actually. They did. I did hear things. But at first, it was a what I call a thought wave. Again, it's my description of how it felt to have this wave of an idea come into me to where I understood all of it, but without human words and sound needing to be spoken. And I understood it right away. And what they were saying was, it's not your time. You have to go back. To which I said, no, <laughs> I mean, where would I go? Go be, go be what? Go be who? I'm home. I'm me. I'm realizing this is who I am. I'm so happy about it. And then they're telling me I have to go back. And so, you know, me being me, I don't think my personality went away. And I was like, uh-uh, nope. So they said it again, you have to go back, go back and help people. Remember who you are, go back and help them. And again, you know, my personality was kind of there, I was a little stubborn and I was like, mm -mm, nope. And, and my, my reaction was I'm home. Why would I go anywhere? This is who I am. And then they really anchored it in, um, go back and help people, remember who you are. And they said, you know, everybody has an assigned time that they can leave. You can't leave before, you can't leave after, and this isn't your time. Go back and help people. Remember who you are, remember who you are. Go back and help them. And at that point, I really felt the truth of what they were saying, that it wasn't my time, and that, that I had things to do on earth. And in that moment, I wanted nothing more to do than to go complete whatever it was I was meant to do. And so I said, okay. And in that moment, I didn't know how to get back in my body, but I remember trying, which is kind of funny because it was like, okay, I'm going to go do this. And like, nothing happens. And I don't, you know, it's not like you, it's not like you suddenly remember how to go back in your body. You know, all of this is sort of new, even though it's familiar, it's new. And um, 
so I told them, I, I don't, I don't know how to get back in my body. And that's when I just felt this force behind me, which is interesting because I wasn't in a, in a physical body, but it was like something pushing me from behind through outer space really fast. And then boom, I was back in my body. I took a breath and I was in tremendous pain. Um, so that was, then my husband was kind of trying to wait. I think he had just found me not breathing and my color had gone from my face and he, he just walked in and saw me. So he, you know, you don't start CPR the second you find somebody unconscious. So he was waking me up and yelling my name. And in that moment I opened my eyes and there he was. And I remember he said, where'd you go? And I said, I died and I couldn't move anything. I was just sort of lying there with no energy and my, my, the energy didn't come back um, for a long time. Actually, it took a long time to get my energy back. I was, I was, I was, I struggled for 10 years. This was not a fun experience. Um, but the moment that I took a breath I, and I came back, there was such an intense raking pain throughout my entire body that my first thought was actually, I have to go to the hospital. And in that moment, they kind of brought me, I mean, it's not like I died again, but it was almost like they just brought me back into the bliss and told me not to use Western medicine which was really hard for me because I come from a Western background. I mean, yes, I practice alternative medicine, but before that I worked in a trauma intensive care. And when you stop breathing, you should go to the hospital, right? When you have a bad accident. Um, but they let me know that it would interrupt whatever happened, that it really wasn't my path and I, and I shouldn't go. And I understood it on a deeper level than even though my logical mind wanted to override it. It was like, it, they, it was like, it was in me. Like I, okay, that's not happening. So, um, that was, that was my experience. And it was so hard after that because, because I both came back as who I really am, but I also lost my identity of who I was. And then I came back with some gifts, I guess you can call them, and some teachings, but I didn't know what it was, right? It's like, again, it's like I have this box that I can't open have this magical, incredible experience that I can't process in my human mind. Part of me wishes it wasn't even real because it was just too much. And I really liked my life, by the way. Like things were good. I, I remember feeling like, wow, if I could just do this until I'm old, I would be so happy. Like practicing Chinese medicine, rock climbing with my friends until I'm like well into my 70s or 80s and then I die. That would be like the best life. And when I came back, I realized, and the hard part was I didn't have that connection to who I am anymore as the identity that I had worked so hard because we work hard, right? We, we go to school or we do whatever to like create this identity, right? I'm a doctor, I'm a nurse, I'm a, I'm a climber, I'm a filmmaker, whatever. Like we create these identities and then it got washed away and I couldn't go back to it because I knew it wasn't real, but I couldn't move forward into who I really am. And it was like living in limbo living in this existence and I was sick. Uh, so it was, it was rough. Wow. Can I ask questions? <laughs> <clears throat> well, first of all, I am, you're, you're telling the story amazingly. Thanks. Uh, it's emotional. Beautiful. It's hard for me to tell. It's it. Every time I tell it, it's, you're like, say it like it's the first time. I'm like, that's not hard. It, yeah. it's hard. It's not something I think about. It's yeah. not something I talk about. Like my husband and I have barely even talked about the whole thing and processed it because it was so devastating. And then that's also why I only go on podcasts where I feel safe is because the trolls are cruel to where like, they're like, well, you didn't die. Or I would only believe you if you stayed dead or you're a lying bitch. Or like I get really bad trolls and it's such an, an a sacred and emotional and hard thing I went through. I'm like, I don't want to be on a podcast where, where people are mean. Like, uh-uh. Yeah. No way. <laughs> yeah. It's too much energy coming at me. It's not the comment section. Like, yeah, at this I point, guess. I have a manager that handles that. But I feel all of this energy. I'm like, you don't know what people are going through. You don't know what's going Like, who? I know. Oh, I, like, how much energy it takes to say something mean or to say something unnecessary. It's astounding. I wonder why people watch stories like this just to troll us. Like yeah. you can't, this is not, you know, this is clearly a podcast that's a little more supernatural. 
Like you're not selling beauty products. So if somebody wants something in the realm of normal, they should just go find that. But like, why go find an extraordinary podcast about unordinary or extraordinary superhuman things and then watch it and then just to troll people, like go find whatever you like. Yeah. I saw the best, I saw the best, um, or I read the best, uh, explanation of trolls. And it was like, this woman was saying, it's like going into a store and grabbing a sweater and running around the store screaming, I don't like this sweater, instead of just not buying the sweater. And I'm like, that's exactly what people are doing. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah it's, I don't know. I maybe just the, I delete maybe blog. A lot, maybe a lot of people are crazy. Who knows? <laughs> I well, yeah, that's how I explain lower realm beings. They just, I think yeah. that's what a lot of them are, are these people from the lower realms. And yeah. they're just trying to take it down because it's all they know how to do. They want to, they want to create more comfort zone for them. So they see people that have a high vibration, a high frequency, a big message or a channel for the messages. And then they have to try to destroy it. But did your near death experience help you deal with this to be more indif indifferent to all these trolls and? Because eventually when you're doing a podcast, for example, I was very sensitive. I used to um, work in Hollywood and you get a lot of rejection over there. I was a yeah. director. Let's say you bring a screenplay and you get rejected 20 times. You got to give up. And then when you're doing this kind of public things like filmmaking or acting or even podcasting over and over and over again, you develop thick skin. You know, who cares? Every negative comment is a, is a comment. It helps your podcast. Yeah. That's what I'm, yeah. So we have to develop that uh, Zen attitude towards these trolls. I think so. I think, and then some of them, if they're on my channel, I just delete and block them. Like, I don't want that vibration on my channel. And yeah. I'm not growing it. You know, I, I don't have a podcast. I just put up some free stuff. Um just for a way to like, when people find me, they can find some things, but I'm not trying to grow my channel to thousands or millions mm -hmm. to where I get, I mean, I guess technically I can monetize it at this point they've offered and I haven't done it, but you know, for me, it's just like this extra thing. So if I get a trolling comment, I just delete block. Like if you don't yeah. like it, go away. There are 8 billion yeah. people on, the, on this world. I want to bring in the people that are really supportive of my work and that I can support them. And otherwise like go find somebody who's aligned with you, but you don't get to be in my space and in my energy and troll me. Like you get delete. You, yeah. And honestly, at this point, I have people do that for me. So I don't even have to look at it. So it's like, I'm not yeah. even going to see your comments. <laughs> so. I should, I should delete those comments too. But sometimes you just miss them. You know, you can't read all of them. Now, are you yeah. doing for, are you still a nurse? Or are you doing something else right no. now? No, no. Well, at this point I'm a coach and a okay. speaker so I speak on stages and mentor. And, um, you know, my, I have another book that I'm publishing next year. Um, okay, well, so we'll talk about I started book. That over 20 years ago. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Now I want to ask you about that uh, familiar familiarity you experience in that void. It seems like a very scary situation, fearful. You know, you just suddenly, you are in darkness all by yourself. And you know how people are afraid of loneliness and darkness. But you describe that as a beautiful familiarity. You suddenly find yourself in this darkness but you feel beautiful inside that's what i understand it was like the concept of dark and light went away and there was only peace and bliss and so while i can describe it with my human my human words now and to say there was no light it was like you know in this world we have light and dark and there there is light and dark and other things that we don't have words for and that's why i call it this void it was like this ever expanding void of of bliss and love and peace and joy so it wasn't missing anything because it's like if you could if you could put yourself in a river of bliss you're not missing anything right and that's what it felt like just this ever expanding love bliss joy and peace so there was no room for fear because there was no no duality there wasn't there wasn't love and fear. It was only love. So I couldn't experience fear because there was no more duality. Yeah. yeah. So there was no more worries. You didn't care about, let's say at that point, you said you were pretty happy in your life. You probably had some, some stuff. I don't know, maybe a nice car, a nice 
husband, maybe a house, who knows. And you didn't feel like you're losing anything. You didn't miss anything. What do you want on the other side? No, I had this realization that we're all one. So how could I miss anybody? We're all one. There was no, they were all part of me and I was part of them. And that was part of my realization was this is who I am. I am love, bliss, joy, peace. We are all one. So it's kind of like, you know, my pinky finger isn't going to miss my, my thumb because it's on one hand. <laughs> so we're all one. There was nothing to miss. And then I didn't miss my old life because I realized that wasn't ultimate reality. Okay, we just spoke a couple of minutes ago about the trolls, about the lower entities. Are we all one with these lower entities as well on the other side? Yeah, I mean, much to, we might not want to think we are, but we are all one, including the, including the trolls and what I call lower realm beings. Um, so in my experience, <clears throat> there are higher realms and lower realms, and, every, and people from higher realms can incarnate on Earth, and people from lower realms can incarnate here on Earth. <clears throat> but we're all one. And so people that are behaving badly, I mean, we, we've talked about trolls being having an online presence. You know, we, we see the trolls and the way they twist our words or twist our comments or they take something and what's meant to be beautiful and they twist it in something negative and then, you know, kind of try to shove it down your throat or make a comment. And it's just their, it's just their nature. It's where they're at. And it's actually perfect as much as we don't like it. We don't want to be around it. It hurts our feelings. It's perfectly aligned for them. So, uh, the way I describe these beings are some of them are higher realm beings, right? So if we're all one and we're looking at a human body, higher realm beings might be at the level of your eyeballs or your mouth or your head, your hair, right? Higher realm beings. The lower realm beings might be at the level of your knees or your toes or your ankles. Well, we're not cutting anything off. We're not cutting off your knees because it's lower realm beings, right? You, you are all one. And the more that the higher realm beings start to transcend and raise the consciousness on the planet, the more that wave just kind of brings up the lower realm beings as well. And so it's really a lot for the higher realm beings to continue doing really big, beautiful things in the world and get out there and get over the imposter syndrome and get over the, oh gosh, I don't know if I can do the big thing I'm being called to do, but get out there and do it because they're ushering in a higher age. But it's hard because the focus of this planet is on average and even lower. I mean, look at the media. A lot of it's lower realm being activity. They're just focused on what the lower realm beings are doing. So then we think that that's kind of normal. The higher realm beings are, they don't fit in here. And the thing is, is if you're from a higher realm, you're not going to ever fit in here. You're not meant to, but you are meant to do something potentially really big and beautiful to help up level and, and, and usher in a higher age of consciousness for humanity. Um, but the lower realm beings, I think when they're here, a lot of them are just living their best life. They're enjoying things. They, they, you know, because they can bring people down, they can create new, you know, horrible genocides. They can create just really awful things that are being created in the world with fear and it works, but you know what? Love works even more, but the higher realm beings, a lot of them are hiding. They're shy. They're not really taking action on what their soul is calling them to do, or they do it like just a little bit, but not on a bigger scale. And they know they're meant to play big. So that's happening as well. And it's, you know, people that are called and they're like, I think I have been incarnating on a higher realm. It's time for them to get into action because the lower realm beings aren't just going to go away there. We are all one. Okay. Who are those four beings that you, you saw who were, who met you over there on the other side? I don't know. Okay. It's not like I got names. I don't know. Either. <sighs> so the way that I work, I see people that have guides, right? People have their spirit guides. And that's, I feel like spirit guides are a little more human. There are a lot of times that there's a sense of humor. They can be funny. Spirit guides can have, I don't know. They, they, they interact with us in a little more human way, I think, sometimes. And then I feel like these beings... I've never given a name to them because it's so beyond what I can tell anybody with human words. Um, but if my, if the higher realm being version of me could have guides, that would be kind of what it is, but it was more like colleagues or, I mean, cause we're all one, it's hard to separate. Um, so I, again, I can't say I know who they are, but they're so familiar and yes, they were guiding and helping me, but on a, bigger level than what I can feel like my day-to-day -day guides do. 
So you felt like they were so dear and so close to you. They were like the closest relatives in your life. Like, what was the feeling when you were around these four beings? Non-human. So I wouldn't even say relatives because it was very much a non-human experience. It was like, I don't know. I don't have human words to describe it. I wish I did. Um, just such powerful beings of love. Okay. I mean, it's like the manifestation of love, bit bliss, joy, and peace, like meeting that. I don't, we don't have human words to encapsulate what that felt like. And even if it did, it, it, like I could say bliss and most people on earth have not experienced ultimate bliss. So we know the word, we can look up the definition, but have you actually experienced the divine bliss of your soul, right? And probably a lot of people here have not. Yeah. Yeah, that's what a lot of near death experiencers say. They they don't have no words to describe the feeling or the colors or the yeah. beauty they've seen on the other side. They have no not enough vocabulary. No. Now you saw the disc, that lighting disc like on the floor. It was not on the floor, but you saw it on the bottom coming. What do you think was that? You said there was a beam coming out of that uh, disc of light? Dropping into it. Okay. So the, the circle was here, and then the being was the part of me that got attached, and it was going through this light. I think I was like, it was almost like the death of, now don't take me wrong and think I'm completely enlightened, but I, it, part of it was the a death of my ego, I think in some okay. ways is what that represented. Okay. Because I saw you know. that image somewhere, you know, that people do these images with the AI right now, and I've seen that somewhere. Oh, wow. Something, see, I, th I think I've seen that somewhere, the disc of light and the, and the figure coming oh, into wow. the disc. I think I saw that somewhere. Wow. Maybe I saw it in my dream. Maybe I saw it when oh, I was... Really? Yeah, there's a lot <laughs> of cool images out there now. Um, yeah. That's amazing. That's always amazing. I think anything we think of or see can be happening somewhere for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the parallel universe, like you said. Yeah. Now, after this experience, I, I spoke, I had a, a, several interviews with Frank Romero, and he's talking about 5D reality. We live here in 3D reality right now. And he says that right now, Humanity is moving into the 4D very quickly. It's, it's a big shift happening right now. He said that he is living already in 5D, five-dimensional world. That's his world. How do you feel? How did you feel after your experience? Did you shift into the 4D or into 5D? What was your change of uh, reality? Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think the ultimate reality is we're always living in the higher consciousness. We're always in 5D. It's just that we're dreaming that we're not, but we're already there. And so the, again, the idea that it's gonna take linear time for us to get there is actually not true. We can decide to wake up right now and have an, an entire planet be woken up. Will it happen that way? Probably not, because we have beings that are lower realm beings and they are comfortable where they are. And But it really for the higher realm beings, it doesn't have to take a lifetime to reach enlightenment. It takes a lifetime of discipline of living in alignment with your soul, but the actual experience of Samadhi is a moment. The actual experience of awakening is just now and you realize who you are. So I think that we have to get away from the belief that it's going to take time, that we're heading towards something better. Why don't we just be in that better moment now, right now? and birth that right now. Because the more that the, the, all of humanity believes that something better's coming, something better's always gonna be coming. And in 50 years, something better's coming. And in 300 years, something better's coming. Or we can say, you know what? I'm birthing a higher consciousness in myself right now. I'm awakening to ultimate reality right now. Then that something better is here right now. So I think that part of moving from the 3D into the 5D is recognizing that time is not linear. There is no beginning, middle, end. There is no yesterday, today, tomorrow. Everything is happening right now. There is only now. And if you believe that all good things are coming later, yeah. then the universe is like, cool, everything will just happen later. And then later on, everything's going to be later. So even when it comes into birthing and ushering in this higher age of consciousness, you have to be 
not waiting for it, but being it right now to the level that you're able to, right? So I think it's like, in, I think what happens is so many people with a higher consciousness are dimming themselves to fit in with the normal average person. Stop dimming yourself. Go into the consciousness that you know you can do, or that, that you know you are, and be there 24 hours a day and be unapologetic about how enlightened you are and how gifted you are. And stop, stop trying to make sure that everybody who has like a lower consciousness than you or an average consciousness or whatever, it, that, that, that they're feeling okay. Because for the most part, many of them won't even notice. So just go be that higher realm being that you are. Go be and express and, 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 and radiate that higher realm light, that higher consciousness that you not just have, but that you are. Because that's going to do more than waiting for things to change. That's going to do more right now than, than knowing that you're part of something that's going to get better later. Like, go be that right now. And if you get billions of people on the planet all of a sudden shifting into their highest state of consciousness right now, guess what? Everything's going to change right now. Everything. So it's a matter of getting over yourself. <laughs> It's a matter of getting over your human, your ego, saying, oh, well, enlightenment's only for Buddha or Christ consciousness is only for Christ consciousness. I could, I could never be that wise. Well, okay, well, go be as wise as you can be and do it right now. You know, put down the bad habits that are, that are making you roll downhill. Start surrounding yourself with people who you admire and want to be like, that you aspire to be like. And so it does include some hard life changes for some people to take a look at themselves and say, I think I have a higher than average consciousness. And I think I'm, I'm dimming myself so that I fit in so that I'm in my comfort zone, but actually this comfort zone sucks. I don't feel comfortable here. It's just, it's just what I know. And I don't know what the unknown is. And that scares the shit out of me. Excuse my language, but that's really how people feel. And yet, when they move into the higher consciousness, when they start behaving in alignment with their soul, they start meeting some really incredible people and coming into higher consciousness communities who are waiting for them. So part of it is just this moment of like, get over yourself. Get over this human part of you that's holding you back from your own soul assignment and go do what you're here to do, which is only being who you're here to be, be the best, most magnificent, lightest expression of you that is possible. Radiate that love everywhere and you're doing it. You're doing it without even having to go do because the human experience is not about doing. It's about being. Because at the end of this world, at the end of your, at the last breath, it's no one's going to ask you, what'd you do? How'd you do? How, how much money did you make? Nobody's asking that. You get to see and experience how in alignment with your soul you were or how in alignment with your ego you were. And that's the only thing they're looking at. That's the only thing you're looking at. How much did I grow in my gifts? How much did I grow in consciousness? How much did I radiate that consciousness everywhere? Or did I hide and act human and just play the role of a human person and hide all my gifts and try to make as much, you know, myself as comfortable as I can in the physical realm? And then you leave and there is no physical realm. Oops. So <laughs> you don't want to do that. <laughs> oh I'm just speaking kind of experience, right? Mm -hmm. I can laugh at myself and my mistakes all day long. Well, Mariko, that was channeled from the universe. I'm pretty sure of that. And I made a note here from minute 45 to minute 47. I'm going to put that right in the beginning of the of the podcast, you know, before the, okay. the story, because it was so, so amazing. It was I amazing. tend to like, I feel like I'm scolding people half the time when I get talking. I just, I can't help it. I just, I, it's very quick conversations with the causal realm. So it's not necessarily me channeling a higher, uh, a, a being because higher beings don't need to be channeled, but we can talk. We can have these quick causal that again, that thought wave just comes through and it's like, here's all the information. Yeah. And I'm speaking definitely to you, right. Sergey. I mean, you hiding and worried about what people think you don't, I don't notice an accent with you. Like get out there, start blowing this podcast up to millions. I mean, Alex Ferrari is phenomenal, but like there's room for more people doing what you do and, and just start deleting people that are, that are their worst. Don't let them in your field. 
delete and block mm. them. And guess what? You're going to have five more people who absolutely love your podcast start following you for every one person that you block because you're telling the universe, I don't want that nonsense. This podcast is not for them. They don't get to troll me. They don't get to troll my guests. They don't get to troll the people making comments. And that's what happens. And then people like me, we don't want to go on those podcasts because we see yeah. that it's not a safe space. It's not clean. They don't, they don't have mm. hygiene in their comment section. So go blow this podcast up as big as you can. The world needs, needs what you're, and we need to see your face and we need to hear your voice. Like one of the, I'll, I'll admit, one of the things I don't like about podcasts is if I only see the person talking, I want a conversation. Yeah. And if somebody's just helping me with questions, I literally was telling my husband, I was like, his podcast seemed pretty good, but I really hope he doesn't just sit there and ask questions without having conversation. Cause yeah. There's no magic in that, yeah, you know. Yeah. Well, I like this kind of conversation. Yeah, people want this. They want to be on the fly on. The, they want to be a fly on the wall. Yeah. While we're having a conversation, they. That's why Joe Rogan and other people are doing so well is because everybody's a fly on the wall and they get to just be a part of this conversation. So yeah. I think you should do that. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Marika. Yeah. Ooh, like I channel and I also help people make a lot of money. Yeah. That's also why I get trolled I'm is because I make. You need to get your face out there. You need to get your voice out there. This needs to be a global podcast. Yeah, I was. Um, but you agree with me when I, that I said that you were channel, you were channeling this, channeling this information from forty-five yeah, I, minutes, I, forty-five. I, 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 yeah, I mean, I don't call it channeling. For me, it's fast conversations with the higher realm. But yeah, it's yeah. A, it, it, it's, it's channeling. Yeah, yeah, I do that. Yeah, that's why conversations yeah, yeah. are the best. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Me too. I love it. But in the beginning, I leave for about 25 minutes or so. I give the guests room to talk, to tell the story, because this is why the viewers come to the podcast so they can listen to the story. And then there is a conversation after that. So Definitely. I don't know, maybe and I'll change know. my format later. I don't know. We'll, well see. I think you being in there and having your face and your voice and all that just gives people permission to be themselves because we are one human yeah. being, race And I have an accent. If I went to your country, they might not understand me. It's like, you know, these people and their comments are ridiculous. And especially if it's coming from America, where we basically don't speak any other languages. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, you need to get out there. Thank you. More. Well, I, I mean, I'll love you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I loved it when you were talking about being in the now. You know how people say, okay, something happened, they say, don't worry, everything is going to be good. Well, that's in the future. Everything is going to be someday. But you say, everything is good. I got yeah. a lesson. I got a lesson. I'm listening and I'm learning, and I, but I'm living it right and now and I'm joyous right now. And I'm being in now right now talking to you. It was amazing. i so lucky to talk to people like you for free. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Now, let's talk about your book. You said you have a couple books in the, in the podcast. Yeah. What a YouTube channel, if you'd like to mention that. Yeah. Yeah. I have, so I have a, a YouTube channel. I put out some, some content there, some energy clearings and things like that and conversations. Um, and then I have my book, Soul Priority, and that's on Amazon. Um, and then I have another book coming out next year and it doesn't have a working title yet. I'm still working on it, but that's going to be coming out. Uh, in 2025. So I'm looking forward to that. And let me ask you now uh, about the name of my show. It's called About Freedom Show. And what's your definition of freedom? I think uh, for me, the definition of freedom is it, realizing who you are is ultimate reality. Because then there is nobody else, there is no duality, and nothing can hurt you. And you are love. And once you realize that you are love, you're free of everything. I love the name of your show. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I feel like I don't want to let you go. I want to talk more. The feeling is beautiful inside. It's just beautiful. Like you channeled some some high, higher energies right now here. I'm telling you. At least I got it here in Europe from you. Thank you. Yeah. Do you have some message for my, uh, for my viewers, for your viewers here, so you can encourage them? Sure. And even um, even even to the trolls, but whatever you feel like saying, yeah, let's do that. Oh, the trolls—they just can't help themselves. No, uh, let's see. I feel like there are. First of all, Sergey, I want to speak to you 
like you are such a beautiful being from a higher realm. And I want to just invite you to really expand this show into just more platforms. Like if we got to see you on TV one day, that would be phenomenal. Like I want to see you because you have such a gift. And I feel like this podcast is like just a small piece of what you actually can do and you're holding back on us. So I just want to say that to you. And I feel like you know what I'm talking about when I say you're holding back on us. Like the world is ready for you. The world is ready, right? So you have to kind of ignore the lower realm beings trolling and doing their things because they're just doing their things. They can't help themselves. Just as the higher realm beings we can't help it either. We've got to do this. You've got to put out your podcast. I've got to do my work. And there's a lot of your listeners, a lot of the people that are that, that, that love your show. And I want to invite them to also continue, not just continue on, on their awakening path, because again, that creates linear time. Like, oh, I will awaken later. Be the best version of yourself right now. Be the most enlightened version of yourself right now. Look at the habits that are holding you back and stop them right now. Just make a decision and stop whatever bad habits are holding you back from being the greatest, brightest, most, most loving expression of your soul that you can be. Because when you are that, your soul assignment, that's complete. Like that's what you're here to be and do is just radiate that love. Now, I also want to invite you to start to recognize who you are, not just as the soul, but as this being that's here with more to do than just radiate love, right? Like, Saria, you're here, and yes, you're radiating this higher consciousness, but you're doing something. You're doing something. You have a podcast. You're, you're, you're creating a platform for all these messages to get out. And I feel like a lot of your audiences, they have something that they're meant to do also with this radiance within them, with this consciousness within them. And it's literally, I want to invite them to start now. Start right now by saying yes. So that's the first thing. When we keep putting off a soul assignment, when we're here to do something, right? Do, so the first, the only assignment is to be, right? That's all, we're here for enlightenment. That's it, that's it. There's no other thing we're here to do except for enlightenment. So once you start saying yes, and you're like, okay, I'm here for enlightenment. I'm gonna be the best and biz biggest expression, most extraordinary expression of my soul I can be. Now, what do you wanna do with that expression? Maybe you don't know. Maybe you feel it. And you don't know because you don't have words yet. Maybe you do know and you're hiding. Maybe you know exactly what it is and it freaks you out. Here's the thing. Right now, there's not a replacement for you. You're meant to do this thing unless you say no. And then what will happen is the universe will give that assignment to somebody else. And you'll watch everything, all of your ideas, even the ideas you never spoke out loud, they will go to somebody else. And you'll watch them live your dream life. So at the very start, you want to say yes, even if yes is just a whisper because it's scary, but you say, yes, I'll do it. What? It, I don't know what it is, but I will. The answer is yes. And you keep saying yes to the assignment on your soul and you get louder with it, a little bit louder and a little bit louder. And then you start getting the ideas dropping into the 3D, right? So it's a very 5D experience of yes to the universe. It's a surrendering it's an agreement. It's signing a contract with the universe that you're going to live your highest life, but you don't know the details of the contract. It's scary. And your life will transform into something great. Only if you do it without fear, though. If you want to live in duality of fear and love, fear and the yes, it's not going to work out. And you're going to look for why it didn't work out and you're going to sabotage. But when you just say yes, as a full sentence, magic will start to happen. And I feel like there's a lot of people listening and that's their next step right now is to just simply close their eyes, feel that they're here for something more and say yes. And that's it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for watching About Freedom Show. I really appreciate you. Click on one of the videos below and don't forget to subscribe.